The following is an encore presentation of stories from the Duralong Transformation Center. Big proper English, so sound more like me, and uh, he's off at some sort of boot camp for criminals. So there you go, so off you go. Now, we'll fix that up in a minute. As I was saying, Lauren Dago, you said, was performed the other night on The, on the Voice. It was good to hear it, nice surprise. It was like, wow, good, nice hearing that. As you know, uh, each time this morning, you usually hear the silky smooth voice of uh, Phil, but he's not here. And uh, we always have a participant from the Dural Long Transformation Center in here. That has not changed. We have Mark today. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Oh, good to see you in here. Thank you for coming in. Normally, we're a lot better, you know, but see, normally I'm not sitting here. <laughs> so today, we're just going down the notch a bit, and uh, we'll do the best we can. So, But uh, we've missed you guys. Uh, you guys have had a, a flu bug out there. Yeah, we had a little um, gastro bug for a few days. Oh, so gastro, that's right, yeah. yeah. Everyone was isolated, and yeah, only, thankful only a few of us got it, or a few guys got it. Right, so, yeah, so we were talking off here. It, did, it did, didn't happen at chapel night, so no. I like chapel night. No, we skipped chapel night for yeah. a week, so. <laughs> yeah. That must have been difficult. It was, yeah. It's probably the highlight of the week. I know, week, so, yeah. I know. We, we, we came once, enjoyed it, mm. haven't mm. been invited back. It might have been because, you know, Rick, our boss, got a little rowdy in there. Oh, know? did he? Yeah. Yeah, he got right. He had to get him out the back, get him saved, get some things cast out. He's okay. He's okay. He's better now. But we'd yeah. like to come back to chapel night. So, yeah. <laughs> but Mark, I guess where are you from, Mark? Um, I'm from the Hawkesbury. In uh, grew up in the Hawkesbury. So in, you're in Sydney? Yes. Okay. Yep. Right. Right. Um, right. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Went to school out there. Had mm -hmm. uh, uh, grew up out there. Parents, mum and dad separated when I was eleven. Eleven. Um, Single child. Had a brother, one, uh, one year older than me, um, which was pretty hard. I, I guess I never, I don't know, at the time I didn't really deal with that. But, um, yes, um, yeah, things started with um, drugs about 14. 14. Yeah, and alcohol. Right. Um, at 14. Yeah, you know, just thought it was the norm to fit in and... Um, oh, yeah, okay, yes, yes, yes. Didn't... Um, Local lads around there, Local the area lads. doing the same thing. But that's okay. what everyone was doing, you know, yeah. so to speak. So I thought it was cool. Yeah. Um, Were your parents drinkers? Did they, did nah. They drink? No. Uh, I think my mum never drank. Um, my dad was a bit of a drinker, but mm -hmm. um, that wasn't really. I mean, I got I got through life. That wasn't really weed and the alcohol wasn't too much for drama. Mm. My my um, issues started at at forty. They say life begins at forty. Well, mine really. Um, flipped upside down. I was mm. married. I had two beautiful kids and had my own business for 18 years. And um, someone introduced me to ice. Hang on. Back up. Back yeah. Up. Back, back, back up. Back up. Okay. So introduced alcohol and, you know, a little bit of smoke at 14. Yeah. yeah. And then we skip ahead to 40 and you've got your own business. So hang yeah. on. So from 14 yeah. to, so, well, I'm going to say it, I'm going to guess that you, you, your parents provided a pretty stable yeah. home. Mum did, yeah. yeah. Dad dad moved on, but um, he was always in our life. Yeah. But yeah, yeah mum was always there. Both working professionals? Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So obviously you graduated high school and you yeah. went to TAFE or college? I did. Or yeah, I went to TAFE. I did yeah. a landscape apprenticeship. Right. Yeah. Which, um, where'd you do that? I did that in Sydney, in the Hawkesbury. Right. Um, close to home, yeah. So. So. You had, well, I guess as my mom would say, you had some common sense to go to school and get a trade. Yeah. And you yeah. had the skills to keep you there yeah. and graduate. Yeah. Okay, so then you graduated with a degree in um, landscape. I did a landscape trade certificate. Yeah. 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 And then you went to work with, obviously, someone else as an apprentice to learn yeah. some skills. And how long did that last before you stepped out and started your own business? Well, I was with them guys for about eight years, and I got into machinery, driving a bobcat and excavators and stuff. Right. And after the eight years I spent with them, I um, I started work with a guy doing swimming pool excavations in Sydney, and only for about eighteen months. And um, he wanted to move on and do something else, so the opportunity came up to buy some machinery and and get into that uh, concrete swimming pool excavations in Sydney. Right. Okay. Um, now you say buy some equipment like you just walked into Mitre Ten and bought a chainsaw. No, nah, we got <laughs> you a couple some, of trucks and yes, excavators. Yes, we're talking and, big money here. Yeah, bobcats. Well, at right. first I couldn't afford to do that, so I did it with my dad. He he had country pubs and he wanted to break from that for a while, so he wanted to come back to Sydney and put my younger brother through a good school. Okay. So I did it with my old man for for four or five years, and um, it wasn't his thing. Sort of, he went back to country pubs. Right. And 
the opportunity came up for me to do it on my own and yeah so i um borrowed a bit of money and you jumped right out um yeah been, been under a yeah. hundred thousand dollars and and kicked myself off and by then i had this like with the landscaping the, the pool excavation the pool side of it come pretty naturally um, wow, okay. and then yeah started started a business yeah so you, you although the parents weren't together mm -hmm. they still took the responsibility to get involved in what you guys were doing yeah. and yep. invest in your life it wasn't yeah. like okay we're separated and see you on the weekend you guys they actually got involved and did some stuff yeah and yep. uh, it sounds like they were you know, quite successful themselves so yeah yep. uh, pretty much chip off the old block you you know saw what they did and yep. off you're running and you yeah. know so okay because i tip my hat to anyone who starts a business mm. it's not as clear cut as most people would think and sometimes mm. you know that business strikes fire and sometimes that business takes years and dedication yep. but the commitment level yeah. is the thing if you're not committed to it um yeah. things can fall over sideways so um for sure it was, yeah. it was a passion of mine i loved doing it landscaping um and and the pull es and the the excavation side mm. of it the machines and that Actually, you know, a lot, long time there, I couldn't believe I got paid to do something I love. You know uh, what I mean? Yeah. It was, it was, it was. I loved it. Um, I love this yeah. too. I keep waiting for them to throw me out the door, but they haven't yet, <laughs> so I still keep coming in. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm still here. Yeah. So, <laughs> but yeah. So you know, so a bit of a green thumb. Yeah. And you like pool excavation? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't. I've you got to be the first person I've heard say, you know, I actually like that. You yeah. Know? So you know, it I'm, was hard work. Yeah. It, yes. But, um, Walking into a backyard and then, or yeah. a concrete place and okay, we're gonna dig up, dig this up and put a pool there. Yeah. A lot of work goes into that. A lot of thought. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you must be a pretty brainy guy. Um, I'd like to think so. <laughs> I guess. Well, you yeah, um, asked me to put a pool in. Well, okay, Kmart, yeah. Wade Pool. What size do you want? Yeah. <laughs> It's, yeah, it's like all the process. We turn up with a pool builder and have a plan. Um, the people that obviously have an idea of what they want and go through councils yeah. and get it approved. And then um, pretty much with concrete pools, we, we sculpture the pretty in the shape of the, the pool into the ground. And then that's pretty much the formwork. And um, the, they tie the steel through and spray the concrete through and create the shell. And then, yeah, so many weeks to cure, and then the rest goes on. You do your paving top, and you do your your tiles and your interior, whatever interior you want. And it's pretty much um, there's that many products and that out there. Those you know, you can pretty much create your own resort in your own backyard. You wow, know, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, what he said. <laughs> <laughs> I can't repeat that. Wow. Yeah. So when you were in school and you did landscaping, mm -hmm. was that part of it, or did you have to learn how to do the pools later on? Yeah. Um, it came later. I had um, had had the the knowledge to um, to read Sorry. plans and to to um, yeah. had that you know, and a lot of it was levels and um, using laser levels and stuff like that to mm. create heights and depths and stuff like that. So um, so you've been lowballing yeah. in here. You are a smart fella. Oh, Plain and simple. Yes. Go all right. I do all that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Wow. I, I'm, yeah. not, I'm not getting anywhere near that. Yeah. So, wow. Okay. So, all right. So, let's dial it back a bit. You know, you started drinking and a little bit of smoking at 14. Mm -hmm. Obviously, for you to go through mm -hmm. TAFE and an apprenticeship and then get mm -hmm. to that point, it didn't have control of your life, but no. it was still a, you know, a, a, a part of your life. But, yeah. Okay. So, how mm -hmm. much, I mean, how much... Were you drinking and smoking? I mean, you're a tradie. Yeah. After work, did you hit the pubs with everybody? And yeah. Afterwards, all that. Okay, yeah. so did that you yep. did you see the problem coming on, or you just hadn't noticed it yet at that point? Um, I was, I was the the like you said the tradie yeah. who grabbed the long. You know, the the first thing was to find the nearest bottle shop after work, grab the long neck, um, cruise home. Um, weed was on and off for me, mm. and um, at at a sort of early 18 19 i think it really paranoia started to hit me a bit with marijuana and and as hydro hydroponic marijuana was just so strong and uh. i didn't really agree with me too much so yeah. I, I sort of i steered away from that a bit okay um which um you know i still have friends and family. It, was, it was on and off you know we um i did a bit of it and then we i, I met my 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 wife my ex-wife now um and we decided you know we wanted to have a future we had the same dreams and goals we wanted the same things and we decided to get off the weed and was she in a building trade uh no she was an accounts clerk yeah ah. so um so how'd you guys meet um at the pub okay <laughs> yeah 
Um, yeah. And the we were friends. The watering hole, I get yeah, that. Yes, you, know, yeah. you know, we, were, we sort of hung around the same crowd and we were friends mm. for a while. And, mm. and um, yeah, but as time went on, we liked each other's company and spent more time together. And What age was that? Um, I was 23, 23 when we got together. Mm. Officially, Michelle was 19. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. And, um, yeah, we started... You know, we we lived apart for a little while. Then we got our first place, rented mm. it, and and um, yeah, then then went back to a smaller place because we wanted to build a future and mm. and um, uh, you know, obviously buy a house and have kids and all those yeah. dreams and goals. Yeah. So we started that, doing that. Um, so when did you get married? We got married in two thousand and two. Two thousand two. Yeah, April okay. April twelfth, two thousand and two. All right. Yeah. So um, obviously she didn't mind a drink as well, and uh, you yeah. were off and on with the marijuana. Was she? Was yeah. she a smoker? Then? Okay. Um, a little bit. A little bit. All yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. So you um, decided, you know, get married, have kids, yeah. but not. Was the alcohol and the marijuana discussed at that point, or this is something we can still handle and have children as well? Well, we 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 um I got off it then, and and. And you know, I have to say, good things happened in my life when I was clean and sober. Mm. In that in that twelve month or couple of year period of um, of nothing, we um, we got married. We I started my my that's when I I gone from the landscape to the pool industry. Started my business. Um, I think we had our first child not long after. Um, yeah, we 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 bought our first home. We landscaped that. We put a pool in, obviously. Yeah, um, renovated it. Yeah, so we put a pool in. Obviously, I can, no, no, no problem there. No cost. Yeah. So okay. Of course, I wasn't going to. I, put, I did everything first, and then thought, no, we won't do a pool here. And then we turned everything upside down and put a pool in. So yeah. So all right. So yeah. so married house pool. Yeah. Um, you were still clean and sober. Not yep. a problem at all. Yeah. Okay. So. Yep. When did the children come versus when did you pick up um, drinking our marijuana next? I, what happened there? How, how'd you how'd you run back into that? We went through um, a, a few good a lot of good years. Um, I had my second child. Um, Aaron was born in two thousand three. Amy mm. was born in two thousand six. Mm. Um, good spread. In two thousand and six, we bought our second home. We'd upgraded from a house block to an acre. Mm. Because by then I had truck and machine and that, so we needed a bit oh, more yeah, room. Yeah. Um, and that was good. And there's, there was a little bit of weed on and off. Um, I got Ross River fever from a mozzie bite, so that stopped me from drinking alcohol. And uh, it would be it was four years ago in Easter, hmm. um, five years ago in Easter, sorry. And the doctor said avoid alcohol, and, and I realised why because I tried to have a drink here and there, but it just made me really crook. <laughs> oh yeah, it affects your liver. So, <laughs> yes. um, so that hasn't been Ooh. in my life for a while. Um, yeah, and you know, so did you substitute it for the marijuana? Um, no, not really. Not really. No, okay, it was good. pretty good. I was yeah. pretty good for a while. Um, yeah, but I mean, working at hard, at long hours. I was leaving home at four thirty in the morning. Sometimes not getting home till eight, nine, maybe ten o'clock at night. Mm. Um, drive, traveling to Sydney every day, working. Um, it took its toll. It does and I was burning out. Um, there was little issues with my wife and I, which um, um, you know I think if I didn't pick up my next addiction, we probably could have overcome. But yeah, that's when the next phase of my life had about 40, 41. Come. And we're back with our guest, Mark, from the Dura Long Transformation Center. Uh, before we left off on the break there, we had a really good discussion about your upbringing and where you are in, at that point in life when you were uh, married, uh, two children, yeah. uh, not one, but you still had both businesses, uh, which was landscaping and pool. And well, I, only, only had, I had the... Um, well, with the machinery and the truck, it was pretty much I could spread my field and do a bit of both. So I, was, of, okay. I did rock wall with the rock walls and you know driveways. I right. did the sw- ninety-five percent of it was the swimming pools by then. Mm. Yeah, it was pretty much what I focused on. Um, Good yeah. upbringing, school, yeah. TAFE apprenticeship, business owner, met your wife, casual yeah. drinker, yeah. Um, casual smoker here and there, off and on. Yeah. Ross River, you got you got yep. that, so that curbed the drinking. Yeah. Um, and then we, we before we left off, we began to talk about how um, the lifestyle, how mm-hmm. the hours 
yeah. were creeping up on you. So paint a yeah. picture for us at that point when you were doing I mean, you were leaving yeah. at 4.30 and coming home. Yeah, I was leaving at 4.30 and coming home at um, anything from 5, 6, 7, sometimes 10 o'clock at night. You know, mm. like when you leave Sydney in the afternoon, especially Friday afternoon, try yeah. and head an hour and a half. <laughs> uh, northwest to the Hawkesbury, mm-hmm. uh, you got a lot of traffic, yeah, and and it took its toll. You know, yeah. I, mean? I I was burning out. Um, I didn't want to. I created a lifestyle for myself and my family mm. that was pretty good. You know yeah. what I mean? I didn't want to go backwards from that. Yeah. You know, and I you guess genuinely loved what you did. I loved it. I loved yes. it. I really yeah. did. You know what I mean? I had a passion for it. Mm. I couldn't believe I was saying. I couldn't believe I got paid to do what I loved. It was it was truly. I, I loved it, you know what I mean? Mm. I got I never had a problem getting out of bed any morning yeah. every morning. I never I never spent a cent on advertising. Mm. I had plenty of work, so I was I got good at what I was doing. Yeah. You said and, something uh, off air which got me. You said, you know, you you you'd walk in and you you see this backyard and then you transform this thing into something that it's what mm. the owners wanted and it mm. was just yeah. you created something. Yeah. 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 And to put to to see the you know, the pleasure of doing that for people mm. was um was big for me you know what I mean yeah. I, I liked it and I took pride in it you know what I mean mm. um, I got good at it yeah and it was um, to, to create a resort in people's backyards you know I've, I did I did a really big one for a friend up the road from my place and um, they spent probably $130,000 on this mm. and, and to them they said Mark it's priceless they have their own resort in their own backyard it was truly that's what you create you know yeah. what I mean so that was I, I loved it. Yeah, I couldn't get enough of it. Yeah, oh, man. Dang, become excellent. that can become a bit of an addiction. You know what I mean? Oh, soft, yeah, 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 yeah. But I mean, you yeah. know, it's we're 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 creative. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I mean, we come mm. from the creator, so ergo, mm. we're of his stock, so we are creative. Mm. And you know, he wants to bless the work of your hands, and yeah. to fall into what you like and mm. and 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 what you love to do is one thing, but also to be paid from it is yeah. another. It was, you know, was a blessing. Yeah, yeah. it is a blessing. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's just God's grace and gift on your life. But at yeah. that point in time, you didn't know it. No, that's right. <laughs> you didn't yeah. know it. You didn't know it. Yeah. So all right, so mm. you, you're doing long hours, yeah. and um, you know something has to change. Yeah, and I think I lost I lost. Um, what was important to me too mm. with, with my family, you know, my, my wife and my kids, and I couldn't, I couldn't, um, I really couldn't say no to builders because I didn't want them to go and get other people, and yeah. I'd be sound on the, you know. So you created that. So yeah. something had to change. I was burning out. I was, I was, um, I was struggling, and um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't go looking for it. But I was at a, a guy's house one afternoon having a beer mm. and he had some people move in were renters which they were on ice I didn't know at the time Yeah, and he said to me you look tired Mark and I said I work hard you know what I mean it was mm. a Thursday Friday Arvo long week um, he said to me try some of this and I said what is it he said work a man's drug um, I tried it and uh, I can honestly say now it's the biggest mistake of my life wow yeah. so your wife wasn't there when you no no, okay, but no. she would have seen that you were working the long hours. Have you guys had yeah. discussions about you know maybe yeah. curbing the business back? Yeah, she, um, we talked about selling the business and maybe both because she looked after the kids and yeah. she did the house thing and um, which you know blessed her for she she did her part you yeah. know what I mean and I was doing my part. Um, we talked about selling the business um, and I, both of us going to work you know mm. what I mean. But then you know it was like you wouldn't be able to spend so much time with the kids. True. So, I, you know, I didn't, I wanted to keep, maintain the lifestyle I had, yeah. you know what I mean? And um, I guess when the ice come along, it, as it does, it gives you energy and you think you're Superman and you think you're invincible. Mm. And at that time it was like, this is the answer to all my problems, you know what I mean? Yeah. And um, I went on for a few years without anyone really knowing, I mean... I guess I knew and, and my wife could see change in me mm. um, and things like that. Um, yeah, and like I said to you before, when you start turning eight hours sleep a night into eight hours sleep a week, yeah. you start to really oh, yeah. burn the candle at both ends yeah. and your whole world starts to crumble. Things and, start to break down. Yeah. Um, do. Things got worse with my wife. I wasn't spending time with my kids. Uh, not long after that, my mum got diagnosed with a rare brain disease, mm. which was really, I was so close to my mum, it really crushed me. I didn't know how to handle that. Um, had she known that you were on ice? Had she seen the changes as well? Or I, you just hadn't seen it that frequently for her to notice? I think, yeah, I think, um, you know, I think 
I, you know, for me, I guess I didn't think I'd changed much. I thought I was cool and I'm yeah. kicking goals, you know. And I, but I think people around me can see it a lot more. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, There's something wasn't right. Yeah, you know we're I mean? often the last person to actually see that yeah. on the outward. Um, mm. I, people can see. Yeah, I, we know, but yeah. we think we're still putting up a good show. Yeah, well, you know, I was putting up a good show. You know, yeah. I actually went home one after about a year or so, and and my wife's an accountant clerk my, her dad's an accountant they did my books you know and mm. I said there was you know I had some money spent with no receipts and I thought this is my chance to fess up and I wasn't I was doing the wrong thing mm. and I knew it and it was eating me out and I didn't want to do it and when I went home and I spoke to my father-in-law he said you know Mark you've done 200 hours extra on your machine this year you've done like 13 out 13 months in a 12 month year you've made extra $87,000 whatever you're doing keep doing it <laughs> okay, so you so you walked into confession and he's throwing accolades at yeah, you. And it's yeah. like, okay, mm. okay. So, yeah, uh, so, so what happened? Did the Eagles say, okay, hey, look, we're getting away with this. Let's keep going? Yeah, I guess so, yeah. Oh. yeah. Um, which, you know, was things just got worse for me. You know, it was probably another 12 months later when um, I went for work with a mate one day, a landscaper, who'd I'd done ice before, but mm. it didn't grab hold of him like it did with me he yeah. was okay to walk away from it and he knew i was in trouble and he yeah. knew i needed help and so mm. i went home and fessed to my wife and and um told her what i was doing she still didn't believe me she knew there was something terribly wrong but she didn't pick that but she never thought in the wildest dreams that was the issue you yeah. know what i mean um isn't that funny about that drug i mean one hit yeah. you disappear for six years yeah right so some people yeah. boom, okay i'm all right mm. it's almost like russian roulette yeah and so. i'd heard i'd heard all the i'd heard all the sayings you know once and you'll be addicted yeah. you know but you know you, as you say nah not me never need you know, yeah we, I, we all think we're invincible yes i'm controlling it it's not yeah. controlling me yeah it wasn't until that point then when i said i'd had enough and i needed help yeah. that i realized that um yeah. my life was in a lot of trouble. No know? different from heroin. I mean, one hit of that, you could be gone for six years, <laughs> for right. six, whatever. Same thing yeah. with crack. One hit, gone. Mm. You, you don't know. It, yeah. it is yeah. truly Russian roulette. Yeah. So it's best not to do it at all because you don't know how it's going to affect you. It's yeah. I mean, some people yeah. say the same thing with alcohol, mm. but I mean, the drugs these days, the, depend the dependency on these things are mm. just massive. Yeah. yeah. So you know, it, it it controlled my world. I I didn't think I could live without it, you know. I, mm. I, at that point then, when I confessed to my wife, I went to detox in Penrith. I was good for about four months, but um, there was just that, I was flat, you know what I mean? I was trying okay. hard, but I was flat, and I was missing that little bit of something that give me that little kick, and I, you know, I, I was I was an addict. I didn't know it at the time, but right. I, I depended on it, you know So I mean? you and your wife agreed that you go to... To, to rehab, do you guys agree on that? I yeah. Mean, yeah. How, I mean, yeah. when she finally realized that you were telling the truth, mm -hmm. how'd she take that? Well, oh, she was devastated. Yeah. yeah, she was absolutely devastated. She she really um, and she was there for me, you know, from the start. Good. She was she was positive. She was she looked at all these rehabs for me. Mm. Um, she looked she helped me as much as she could. Yeah. To get help. Um, and then after the second time, I'd sort of confessed that I'd needed help again and all that you so you went I mean? to rehab i i didn't the first time you did i did, I did, did. four months on my own yeah i did on your own? I, yeah okay. i tried i tried to go to meetings and i didn't really fit in yeah um i didn't think i'd belong there you know what i mean i did it was mm, yeah. it was like this isn't me I, I can still i can still hold on to the world i had yeah and beat this you know what i mean mm. um until the second time it was my wife <coughs> that really made hit home and she said to me mark this is bigger than both of us. Yeah. We can't fix this on our own. You need help. You know what I mean? Where's your mom in all this? Uh, in the middle of that, mum got worse. She had a, it was a progressive brain disease, which just got worse and worse mm. and worse. Um, Did you tell her? She knew she towards knew. the end. Okay. Um, the disease was called progressive supernuclear palsy. It's a form of Parkinson's. Mm. Yeah. It deteriorates your body until it stops, but you don't lose your mind. So she had a sound mind. Yeah. She could see I was in trouble. She knew I needed help. Um, same time she did too, but there was nothing we could do for her, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I, I, it really, as that got worse, I got worse. As the issues with my wife got worse and my yeah. mum got worse, my drug habit got worse. Everything compounded on you. you just, how to deal with and it. you fell back to what you knew, made you feel good. You know, yeah, and then I, I slowly lost... 
I lost myself. I lost my world. I lost my kids. I lost my friends. Uh, they were all there for me, you know. Uh, but at that time, you say, oh, you know, it's everyone else's fault, and am I, you know what I mean? And and okay. but yeah, I lost, I lost everything that that I loved. I lost everything that mattered to me. You know what I mean? It was, right. it was. Um, my mum lost my mum in two thousand. And uh, with Mark, our guest today from Deer Long Tans Mason Center, I mean, we left off where, you know, you just lost your mom um, and you knew that uh, you, you, you had gone through the first round of, of uh, well, detox, but on your own. Yeah. And your wife was coming to you and said, you know, this is bigger than both of us. We, we can't do this. Yeah. So what was next step? Um, yeah, it was, uh, I... I knew I needed help, but um, you know, and I knew we look. We started looking at places and stuff like that. Mm. But um, I, I guess I fight. I put up a fight as long as I could to keep my wife and my kids and yeah. my family, my life. Mm. You know what I mean? So it was um, after I lost mum in November 2016. It was about four months after that, five months after that. Um, my wife asked me to move into the next room, which was I was shocked. You know what I mean? Mm. I. I we were best mates, you know, we, we have, you know, my kids, but um, it hurt, yeah, it shattered me, you know what I mean, mm. but it was, um, our world was ch- changing, you know what I mean, so yeah. um, we stayed in the, I stayed in the house for a couple of months, or about a month, um, and we started doing the process of, well, I, I went to mental health um, because I tried to get help there mm. through Penrith Health, uh, mental health at Penrith. Yeah. Um, but I, I couldn't find it in me to walk away from the life I had to go and get help. So I, yeah. I, I battled on, and then I eventually moved out of our home. Were you still um, working the business? I was still working the business. Okay. Yeah. Um, which was, you know, <coughs> it was I was it was taking its toll still. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I was by then I was doing like two thousand dollars worth of ice a week. I was sleeping, like I said, probably eight hours a week instead mm-hmm. of eight hours a night. I was trying to fight for my wife and kids, but. Inevitably, you know, we we um, we agreed to sell the house. Like I, I, I never missed a mortgage payment. You know what I mean? I, I kept working. I never stole from anyone. I never robbed anybody. Mm. But my whole world, I needed help. You know what yeah. I mean? So, we went through the. It was all amicable. We went through the process of selling a house, mm. um, doing all that. Um, Sounds you know. like you really wanted to make sure that your wife and children were looked after. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I, they were. My wife was my best mate. My mm. my two girls and my angels. You know what I mean. They were. Yeah. They they still are. You know what I mean. And and that was the thing. You know, like what I was doing for myself. My love never changed for them Amen. and for my kids. You know mm. what I mean. But um, you know, uh, but yeah, I I guess I needed for me to. I had to walk away from all that. Yeah. And have a look hard look at myself. So we we tried to get into Duralong first because okay. they, you know we realized it was a nice place but they do have a big waiting list and and um i needed help there and then you know mm. what i mean so it wasn't we sold it we ended up selling the house um december 2017 mm. and i sort of surrendered then i realized well the house is gone my wife's gone you know i need to i need to help me now you know yes. what i mean so yeah. i surrendered I went to back to detox at Penrith. Um, what happened to the business? Did you just sell it? Or no, just I it? just put it on hold. It on I told, hold. I okay. said, yeah. Uh, sorry, but sorry, it was. I just pretty much walked away from it. Christmas yep. 2017. Mm. I was still working. Mm. Um, I think it was the 24th of December that Christmas Eve that I did my last job and I finished. Mm. And I just I parked it at a friend at a friend's house. Um, because we don't normally work over Christmas anyway. Mm. Um, and I checked myself into detox for the second time at uh, Penrith. At Penrith. And then, but the only way I could get into there was but I'd already had to be accepted into a, a rehab. So okay. Duralong was a long waiting list. So um, I rang Adele House at Coffs Harbour mm-hmm. and they accepted me. So I went to, on the 28th of December 2017, I went to um, detox in Penrith. On the 3rd of January, I hopped on the train and went to Coffs Harbour, um, left everything behind, and off I went to my first rehab. Okay. Um, yeah, it was January 2018 by then, um, 
and yeah, it was hard to walk to, but I had I need I had to surrender. I had to yeah. find help. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was in a lot of trouble. Um, I spent four and a half months up there. Um, I actually had enough of the way they ran their place, and it was totally different um, to Duralong. Um yeah. And I I walked out of there. Um, went on tour, you could say. For two weeks, with the guy up there, a couple of guys up there, got went right back into the mm. ice scene again. And um, the day I left, I knew I'd done the wrong thing. Yeah. Although I'd made, I'd made the, I'd actually wrote it, wrote it out in a journal to my brother and my wife mm. to explain to them the reasons why I left. But really, it was just an excuse for me to go and use again. Yeah. You know, it was at that four month mark again. Yeah. You know what I mean? I went on tour for two weeks mm-hmm. in Coffs Harbour. Um, until I begged them to take me back. They took me back for another six weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, then they agreed that I do their outreach program okay. and I, I go and rent a, a unit in Coffs Harbour, yep. get a job, which I did. They found a u- unit for me at Pacific Excellent. Bay Resort. Yep. First job I went for, I got it. My skills with a pool company, mm-hmm. Williams Designer Pool, so driving back on the machines, driving the pools, you know what I mean? Um, and I went all right for a little while. Um, but you know, looking at it, I really didn't stand a chance up there. The only people I knew up there was oh, yeah. people involved in that scene. Yeah, you know what I mean. And um, I guess I, you know, the guys I hung with, you know, you, that you say you you don't change things. You know, you know, you don't change it. You end up with the same result, and that's, that's pretty right. much yeah. what happened. You know, my wife and kids come and see me. We had the best weekend before I sort of hit that road again, and. And um, yeah, I got in a lot of trouble again with in a different environment. Mm. But I was back into that scene. The only people I knew there was, you know, the drug mm. scene. Um, so you knew that environment was not going to help you. It was not good for okay. me. You know what I mean? It was on my doorstep, pretty much. Um, and yeah, I got into a little bit of trouble with the law. Not me myself, mm. but people I was running with. Yeah. So they had, and I lent them my car. So the police had my car flag. So everywhere I went, it was guns out, looking for these guys yeah. and. I knew pretty much my world was going to get worse if I didn't if do something about it. Yeah. So it was my boss there suggested that I go and go to um, Riverlands Drug and Alcohol in Lismore. Mm-hmm. I went there for nearly a month. Um, my brother was very supportive then. Um, okay. He wanted me to come and stay with him on the Sunshine Coast. Yeah. And his wife, you know, they, they were truly out to help me, you know, and they wanted to help me 100%. I went. I was only lasted two or three weeks up there, um, and my girls wanted to see me more. Mm. And I didn't really know anyone up there. That was their life, you know. Yeah. What I mean? It wasn't my life. It was a bit of distance from you and yeah. your wife and your girls. And it too. was. Yeah. And it took me days to say to my brother because I knew how much he wanted to help me. I knew how much they put out, put themselves out to try and help me, mm. to build the courage to say, "Listen, I want to come home to my family." And that. So um, yeah, I ventured back to Sydney, moved back with a friend where I was um, living in the Hawkesbury. Mm. I got a job with a company that I used to work for. It was a walk-up start with driving a 30-ton excavator, which I'm good at. Yep. 40 bucks an hour. It was mm. nearly two grand a week. Yep. That was back into the swing of that. Um, I was starting to see my wife and kids Friday nights, um, spending time with them, spend as much time with them Beautiful. as I could. Excellent. Things were going good. And I, you know, went, so I might just go and see my old mates mm. once mm. you know what I mean yep just that once and yes and I did and it was a little bit here and there for a week or two and then it was pretty much the first Friday night that my wife and kids didn't want to see me that was my excuse to say I'm back you know mm. what I mean and yeah. I was back and yeah. I was going too far I was same again I was doing uh, anything from two to three hundred dollars a day of ice and I was back into full addiction and my world was spiralling out of control again, you know what I mean? So how would you end up at Dural? Um Then I knew, I, I quit my job, I, I was honest with them, I said I can't drive these machines around people and all that, yes. and I knew I needed help, and mm. I had I had some, I had a friend in my life that, that, um, that said I needed help, I had, you know, everyone knew that I, I needed help. Mm. I started ringing Dural along, it took me four months, of um, twice a week of ringing Duralong 
till they finally accepted me on the on the second of December. So you were at that point. You knew I want help. I need and help I want it now. It. Yeah, good on you. And I didn't give up because yeah. I'd looked at Adele. I'd looked at these other places. So I kept ringing Duralong. Um, as much as a lot of people around me didn't believe it and that, I knew what I wanted. And you know, I was, I um, a lot of problem was too. I had money from selling my house, hmm. so I I stayed in that environment, the drug environment. But I didn't tell anyone, and I I, I um I kept ringing Jura along for nearly four months. As I said, for two to three times a week, they finally accepted me um, on the second of uh, December, two thousand eighteen. Mm-hmm. And then yeah, the, on the tenth of January, I went to William Booth, yeah, and uh, started my detox. Mm-hmm. Um, five days there, and then on the bus up to Jura along, um, yeah, which yeah, I guess I surrendered and. You know, coming down off that was was torture. I didn't think I was going to survive William Booth. Let get to there, and I guess it was, you know, one day at a time. Once I got to Jurong, you know, yeah. and I didn't. I'd seen the pictures and all that, but I wasn't really know what I was in for. Yeah. Um, and yeah, what an amazing place, you know. Amen. So that was yeah. uh, you, you entered William Booth on the tenth of January. Yeah. And here it is, the tenth of July, and yeah. here you are. Six months clean. Six today, months brother. clean the day. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So it feels good. I haven't felt this good for so long. This is the longest I've been in recovery. You know what I mean? So. Excellent. So. Uh, so, how's the relationship between the wife and the children? Um, signed my divorce papers a couple of days ago. Um, mm. so and that's amicable. You know, it's coming. Yeah. We lost. We were best mates once, but that's mm. over, you know what I mean? I've still mm. got my... My girls wouldn't talk to me before I come to Geelong. It took a couple of months, mm. um, and my oldest daughter broke down one night. She said, Dad, you ever do that again, and you lost me forever. So that's been a big turning point in my life. Um, I've slowly but surely... It took time to... At first, you know, my wife wasn't agreeable about me taking them out in the car and yeah. spending time with them, so it was mm. just baby steps, you know what I mean? Yeah. Having lunch with them. Yeah. Um, a couple of times and then uh, yeah so now I spend time with them I take them out in the car I've actually got weekend planned this weekend where I've got a room in Sydney for the night we're taking the girls out spend the night with them take them into town and, and uh, yeah they're my best mates you know what I mean well so, God is in the restoration man and he's big mm, on family mm, you know what I mean yeah yeah. So, yeah, but you got to look after you first and get well, it together before you can do anything for you. But I think you already know that. I think yeah. you know that. Yeah. And your drive to get better, mm. obviously, mm. really is coming from a strong love for your family. Yeah. yeah I can yeah. see that. You, you, yeah. You're a real family man. You, yeah. You, you want to be there. That's, that's yeah. good. Yeah. So six months in, you're doing yeah. well? Yeah, mate. Yeah. Um, I mean, the what I've got back now in my life, I don't want to jeopardize that ever again. You know what I mean? Yeah. I've, I, I did. Yeah. I lost everything in my addiction. Mm-hmm. I've gained so much in my recovery. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I guess to the grace of God and Duralong. You know what I mean? I, I, I really didn't know what to expect when I got to Duralong. Mm-hmm. One day at a time, as they say. Yep. You know what I mean? Um, and it took me a little bit. You know, it took me a couple of months. Okay, I was clean and sober, but I hadn't dealt with the issues. That were in my life yeah. with my mum and my wife and my and resentments mm. and things that happened. It was everyone else's fault. I think they were the things that no doubt I was a drug addict, but mm. there was there was things in my life that I couldn't handle that I kept taking drugs to, to block out the pain and the guilt yeah. and the shame. And I guess it was probably two to three months into the program where I realised if I was to leave now, I haven't learned anything, you know, because I haven't dealt with all them issues in my life. So Good point. I really yeah. concentrated on on um my resentments and my myself. You know, mm-hmm. I look at myself in the mirror, what what I'd done wrong. Um, you know, I can't change the past but I can certainly dictate the future, you yeah. know what I mean? So yeah, I really worked on that and, and getting my, my um my kids back and and you know, mainly doing the program the suggested things that drew along, you know, mm-hmm. like getting up out of bed every day, making your bed, mm-hmm. going to work duties, doing yep. your classes, yep. you know. Um, taking responsibility for my life again, you know what I mean? Amen. For me, for myself, you know what I mean? So how much so, more time you have to do along? Um, well, I'm, I'm six months today, so I'm, I'm looking... Um, I did initially say a 10-month program. Mm-hmm. Um, I think me having a life before that and, and knowing how to live and, and work and all that, um, I, I think I'd probably... If I get find some solid work at eight to nine months, mm-hmm. I'd be happy... To let go then I've, mm. I've, I've actually pro- approached somebody up here who's contacted me who's interested in 
having me drive machines for them. Yep. Um, so I'm available sort of two to three days a week now, which mm. hopefully that kicks off shortly. Um, and once I get into the swinging thing, I think, yeah, another eight weeks, eight to ten weeks out there. Um, and I think I, I don't think I can learn any more, you know what I mean? Yeah. But it, uh, it truly is an amazing place. Yes. I mean, well, but, do us a favour. Yeah. Before you go, pop back in here and let's let's check in on you. Let's let's check in on you again. Yeah. And just see how you're doing. Well, well, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, this has been an interesting program. Yeah. yeah you're an interesting yeah. fella. Yeah. Smart fella. Yeah. Great drive. Great determination. Mm. And that's needed when you're trying to kick something. Yeah. That's so that's right. good. Yeah. So you got that going in your yeah. favor. And you know, you always got God in your pocket, man. That's it. Right there with you. Amen. Well, my guest today has been Mark. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you, sir. Thank you. See you next week. You've been listening to an encore presentation of the Duralong Stories, which can be heard live every Wednesday at 10 a.m. and repeated 8 p.m. Sunday and 1 a.m. Wednesday, right here on 94.9 rima.cc.